In this section, we're looking at applying the distance and midpoint formulas to help us solve a variety of problems. And it's kind of a review for us for something we should have done back in geometry. So the distance formula is uh, the square root of the difference of the x values squared plus the difference of the y values squared. And this is when we're looking at the distance between two points. If you wanted to find the length of a segment, you would look at the distance between its endpoints. And uh, we've talked about this before in uh, geometry that this is really based off Pythagorean theorem, we just apply it to the graph. Uh, we also have the midpoint formula. The midpoint formula is the average of the x values and the average of the y values. So we'll take our two x and y values. Um, we, let's just write them because we're going to reference them. Let's say we have x1, y1, and x2, y2. And uh, if we want to find the midpoint between those, we would add those two x values, divide by 2, add the two y values, divide by 2. The other one we're going to mention here is slope formula, and there's a few different ways you could find slope. Uh, slope is change in y over change in x, and really there's different ways, but it has to be that relationship. Uh, if you go by the coordinates, you could do maybe y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and that'll give us slope. So the new part we really have here is that equation of a perpendicular bisector. So a few steps we're going to do to get there. So imagine we have two points. And we want to figure out what a perpendicular bisector would be between them. So between those two points, I could draw a line. I could then find a midpoint, and from that, have a line that is perpendicular to it that goes through the midpoints. So the process we need to get there is the first thing we have to find is the midpoint between the two given points. Then once we find that, we're going to use the slope between those two points to find the slope of the perpendicular line. Now, we're going to use slope formula to find the slope, but if I have two lines and they're perpendicular, the relationship between the slopes is they're actually opposite reciprocals. Now, you could say if I multiply the slopes, it gives me negative 1. And that is where we get it from. But if we think of opposite reciprocal, worlds, it kind of makes it a little bit faster. So for example, let's say I uh, have a line and the slope is 2. The slope of the line perpendicular to it would be negative 1 half. We change the sign, take the reciprocal. If it was maybe negative 1 third was the slope, its opposite reciprocal would be 3. So we're going to do that once we get the slope of the line. That'll be the slope of our perpendicular. And then we want to, in the end, determine the slope-intercept equation. Now, we should remember that slope-intercept equation is y equals mx plus b. So, we need to get to that of the perpendicular bisector. Well, we already have these parts. This is the slope that we have from the second step. Remember, it needs to be the opposite reciprocal. And then we know xy, which is the midpoint, because that's on the new line. So what we're going to have to do is solve for b. We're going to take the slope, which we get from the opposite reciprocal. We're going to take that point x, y, which is our midpoint. And then we're going to solve and uh, get the equation. Solve for b, and then we can write our final answer in slope-intercept form. So before we get to that, a couple examples for distance formula. And if you need to, you can always label them x1, y1, x2, y2. And so our distance in this case is going to be the square root of negative 4 minus 8 squared plus 8 minus negative 4 squared. Simplify within the radical, we get negative 12 squared plus 12 squared becomes 144 plus 144 which is the square root of 288. Maybe you don't see it yet, but we go with factor 288. That is 2 times 144, which is 12 times 12. We have a pair of 12s. Those come out. It's 12 root 2. So our distance is 12 root 2. We'll do another example. Distance for this one is the square root of 6 minus 10 squared. And let's stop here. Imagine you want to do 10 first and do 10 minus 6. As long as your second uh, 
term, your y values, you pick in the same order, that's perfectly fine. But I'm going to do 6 minus 10, and then it'll be negative 3 minus negative 9. And really the goal, as we keep solving through this, is to find the difference between the x and y values. So for example, 6 and 10, they're 4 apart. So in the end, whether I'm squaring positive or negative 4, I need to square the difference between them, which is 4. Uh, for the y values, negative 3 to negative 9, that's 6 apart. So by doing the difference, we find out how far apart they are. By squaring it, we get the positive, so we come out with 36. We add those together and we get 52. We need to simplify 52. Well, that's 2 times 26, which is 2 times 13. There's our pair of 2's, so this can be 2 root 13. Now, let's keep the uh, same points. Now we're going to find the midpoint between those two. So in the midpoint, I'm going to add the x values, negative 4 plus 8 divided by 2. We're finding the average, the middle. You could also look at that negative 4 to 8. What is the middle value between them? And you could count them off the number line if you needed to. Uh, let's go to my y's here. 8 plus negative 4 over 2. I get 4 over 2. And 4 over 2. Which gives me 2, 2 as my midpoint. So that is the point midway between the two points I started with. Second one, 6 plus 10 over 2, negative 3 plus negative 9 over 2, we get 16 over 2, and negative 12 over 2, so our answer turns out to be 8 and negative 6. Okay, so now we get to the big one here, perpendicular bisector. So if we jump back to the steps we said, we first want to find the midpoint, then we're going to find the slope of the perpendicular, and then we're going to use that in the equation to solve. So I'm going to try to color code this. So midpoint first. So midpoint is 3 plus 7 over 2, 8 plus 14 over 2. Looks like 10 over 2. 22 over 2, we get 5, 11 is our midpoint. Now I'm going to look at the slope of the original line I had. The slope of that line, and the change in y to the change in x, so I went from 14 minus 8, oops, I said I would change colors, let me jump back here. That's 14 minus 8, and 7 minus 3. And that gives me 6 over 4, not 2, try again, 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2. So that is my slope of my line for the original points. But I want the slope of the perpendicular. So that's going to be the opposite reciprocal of 3 over 2, which is negative 2 thirds. So I have my midpoint. I have my slope. Now I go to my equation. It's going to be y equals mx plus b. I know m, my slope, is negative 2 thirds. x I know is a midpoint. I have the, from the midpoint, that's going to be 5, and y is 11. I'm solving for b. So, so far, so good. 11 equals negative 10 thirds plus b. I'm going to change 11 to be thirds. That's going to be 33 thirds equals negative 10 thirds plus B. I then add uh, 10 thirds to both sides, and I get 43 thirds equals B. So that is my y-intercept. I need that so I can now write my final answer. Y equals negative 2 thirds X plus 43 over And that is my equation of the perpendicular bisector from the points 3, 8, and 7, 14. All right, let's kind of draw a line here, break it up. Now we'll do our next one. We start with midpoint. It's going to be negative 3 plus negative 1 over 2. Negative 6 
plus 2 over 2. We get negative 4 over 2, negative 4 over 2. Looks like our midpoint is negative 2, negative 2. Now we go slope. Change in y, let's do negative 6 minus 2 and negative 3 minus negative 1 for a change in x. I get negative 8 over, that becomes a positive over negative 2, so I get positive 4. And maybe you don't like slope that way. What I like to do for slope is I like to look at the change while, while we're mentioning it. If I went from 6 to 2, I changed 8 in the x direction. If I went from negative 3 to 1, negative 1, I changed 2 in the y direction. So really my change in y over change in x would be 8 over 2, which turns out to be 4 also. If I went in the opposite direction, 2 to negative 6, it's negative 8. Negative 1 to negative 3 is negative 2, so I can do that change sometimes to also help me out. If you don't see that, well, that's why we have slope formula, and that's what we have it to fall back on. Now, we don't want to get stuck using slope, because if we use the slope to then solve this, we'd actually be finding a parallel line, which we don't want. So we want to go for the slope of the perpendicular, which would be negative 1 fourth. So now we do y equals mx plus b. y is negative 2, m is negative 1 fourth, and x is negative 2. Negative 2 equals 1 half, because that's negative 1 fourth times negative 2, plus b. If I change uh, 2 to be negative 4 over 2 equals 1 half plus b, I'm going to subtract, then subtract over <coughs> my uh, negative 1 half. That gives me negative 5 over 2 equals b. So b is 5 over 2. And we can write this as y equals negative 1 fourth x minus 5 over 2.